Praise the Lord. Dear friends, welcome to the reflections on the miracles and signs in the Bible. We have seen many narrations, reports about the miracles in the Old Testament. From the creation narrative uh, to the end of the Old Testament. Now we come to the next stage in the history of salvation, that stage of fulfillment. The Old Testament was a preparation for the coming of the Messiah, the Redeemer. And the New Testament tells how the Son of God came to this earth as Son of Man and how he proved his personality and his message through many signs. And they we call miracles and signs. So in order to start with the New Testament, I read a passage from the book of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 23. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of the Lord. Teaching, preaching, healing. So healing miracles is a visible sign of what he is teaching. And the teaching is the explanation of what he is doing. So the teaching or proclamation of the word of God and the performing the miracles, they go hand in hand. That's the two sides of the same coin. So we are focusing more on the miracles. And in the New Testament altogether, I mean, from the gospel, in the four gospels, we have 49 reports of miracles, 40 reports of individual miracles, and nine summary statements. So summary of Jesus working. All these 49 reports, not all of them found in the same, all the same gospel, or in the, the same gospels. Each gospel has its own, its own particular report, and some are in common. But altogether, 40 individual instances of miracles are reported in the gospels and nine summary statements. When you go to the Acts of the Apostles, there we see 15 such reports, 13 of individual uh, miracles or healing or resurrection that we we'll see, and two summary statements. In the letters, we find very little. And when you go to the book of Revelation, the whole book seems to be a, a miracle. But that is a totally different, uh, uh, different literary form used. You call it the apocalyptic. So a book of Revelation is, we don't take in this category of miracles or signs. So we will be focusing more on the Gospels and then on the Acts of the Apostles. When you come to the Gospels, a major portion of the Gospels are presented as actions of Jesus. And various types of miracles are presented. There are miracles of healing, 20 of them. 20 miracles of healing. Then 10 miracles performed in the nature. Then exorcism, we have four. Four exorcisms and three times exorcism and healing are put together. And raising of the dead, three instances. Altogether, we have 40 such miracles. When you go to, into detail in the miracles in the nature, the first we see in the Gospel of John, turning water into wine. It has a symbolic meaning. It's the first sign Jesus performed to reveal uh, the plan of God, reveal himself and his glory, John said. John will be um, studying the Gospel of John in detail, the seven signs presented or seven miracles presented as signs in the Gospel. John uses the word semeion, semeia, sign, rather than miracle. So the signs, the first sign or the first miracle in nature is that of changing water into wine. Then there is one still in the storm and walking on the sea. Jesus walks on the sea once and Peter is also walking on the sea but also sinking in the sea. Peter wants to walk and Jesus tells, come, come. And Peter goes and when suddenly he sees that the sea is raging and the wind and he tries to sink. He starts to sink and Jesus puts him up. So walking on the sea and sinking and taking up. Then multiplication of laws reported twice. 
it is being questioned and disputed among Bible scholars. Is the same instance repeated uh, in different ways or two different ways? We do not know exactly. Anyhow, there are two reports in the Gospel of Matthew and Mark. The multiplication of laws. Five, first, 5,000 people fed by five laws, and another time, 4,000 people by seven laws. And the only miracle reported by all the four Gospels is the multiplication of laws. Then there's a miraculous fishing reported once in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, and then at the end of the Gospel of John, chapter 21. And second, this uh, question is the same instance reported by two different apostles. Uh, uh, through two different Gospels in two different ways. We will see it later. And then a coin found in the mouth of a fish that is in Matthew. People of, who collect temple taxes came and asked Peter, Don, doesn't your master pay taxes? So every grown-up person, so every male, who, male Jew who was 12 years and old and more had to pay half a shekel every year for the maintenance of the temple. That's called the temple tax. So one shekel found in the mouth of a fish. And finally, one miracle of say, punishment or a symbolic punishment, a fig tree that dries at the word of Jesus. So these are 10 miracles in the nature. We'll see in detail all this. Then you go to the healings various types of healing. Healing of people sick with fever, hemorrhage, dropsy, paralysis, people who are lame, with third hand, bent back, deaf, dumb, blind, etc. Wounded ear, the last one is Peter takes the sword and cuts off the right ear of the soldier and Jesus heals, the healing the wounded ear. All miracles. Then you have the extremely important miracles of raising the dead, three of them. The first raising the dead is done immediately after the death. The child, 12 years old girl, daughter of Jairus, died when Jesus was on the way and Jesus raised the child immediately afterwards. So raising the girl shortly after the death. The second is the raising of the son of a widow at Nain. So the boy, the young man died and he was being carried to the grave at the city gate. Jesus meets the procession and raises the boy. So after some time. So from the de deathbed, from the grave, from the way to the grave. And the third is even more important to understand. That is the raising of Lazarus, who had been in the grave for three days. And her own sister said it would be stinking. There's been three days in the grave. And then Jesus calls him, Lazarus come out and he comes out.
So these are the healing, raising miracles in the Gospels. Now we go to the Acts of the Apostles. In the Acts of the Apostles, we have um, 15 reports, 13 of individual uh, healings or miracles and two summaries. We have the individual healing, the lame walk. Twice, Peter is released from prison. The prison doors open miraculously and Peter is released. Then there's a healing of paralytic, the healing of a sick person. We don't know exactly what kind of sickness. Then escape from the shipwreck. So the ship uh, is broken, but the people are um, saved. Then there's an exorcism of a spirit of divination, a spirit that possessed the girl and gave the power to predict the future, so to say, the divination. And that spirit was exorcised by Paul. Then Another, a magician who was turned blind, who was somehow obstructing the preaching in Cyprus, and Paul cursed the sin. So because of the word of Paul, this magician becomes blind, turns blind. Another negative miracle is the, the seven sons of priest Keva. So he, the seven sons tried to exorcise a possessed person, using the name of Jesus whom the apostles are preaching and the demoniac turns upon them and beats them and all the seven sons of Neskeva run out of the house naked, escape from the demoniac. It's not exorcism, the demon is exorcised, so to say, make the people flee. It's also kind of understanding how to see these things. These are the main reports about. And finally, the uh, dead person is raised, Tabitha. Jesus said, Talitha kumi, little girl, I tell you, rise up. And here Paul is raising a Tabitha from the dead. So these are the major miracles. Now, what to say about this in general? Miracles are signs of God's work. Mostly it is healing positive to show the love of God, his care, his concern. And to prove that what you say is true, the signs are somehow establishing the truth of the word proclaimed. So Jesus said, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. And these miracles prove the truth of his preaching, of his proclamation. They are signs that God is at work. God's saving action that leads people to total freedom as the children of God. So in chapter 4, is the first sermon of Jesus reported in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus' proclamation that begins in the synagogue of Nazareth. Jesus starts quoting from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61, 1 and 2. I read from Luke 4. 16 following. When he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day as was his custom. He stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, let, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Ultimately, in one word, proclaim freedom, liberty. So the, the mission of Jesus, this coming was to bring the good news. And what is that good news? It's nothing but God is your father. You are the children of God. You are free people. You should not be slave to anybody. So the total freedom that God gives, that is what Jesus proclaims. And that is seen by through his various miracles that Jesus performed. So all the miracles Jesus performed were 
explaining, depicting before the eyes of the people what the kingdom of God is. It's total freedom, freedom of the children of God. That's how the eyes are opened, you see. The ears are opened, you hear. The tongue is untied, you can speak. Hear, see and speak. You can to get up, the lame can walk. The bent person has to stand straight and the withered hands has to move. It's a total restoration of the person. All his faculties are given. You have to stand straight as the children of God. You don't have to bend before anybody. You are no more a slave. You have to see reality as it is. You should not be blinded by ideologies and critiques. You, know, you should know who God is, who you are. See the creation as God's creature, as God wants. The reality, see the truth, hear the truth. Don't be misguided by false propaganda. Listen and distinguish what is true. See and hear. Then you have to speak. Don't keep silent. You have to speak out. And you have to act. You have to walk. You have to stand straight. You have to use your mouth, your tongue and your hand. So, so establishing, somehow giving the strength to a person. Re-establishing his human dignity and also making persons as the children of God. So that is the meaning of the miracles as such. Take it all. And this life doesn't end in death. It has to go. I am the life and resurrection, Jesus said. And the very fact that Jesus raises people from the dead shows that he is the life. And this life doesn't end in the grave. It has to go beyond. So in eternal life. So all these miracles we have to analyze in detail, pointing to this one particular aspect that God is love and that love is shared to us humans through the creation that we are created and redeemed and made the sons and daughters of God through the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what Jesus did and this is what Jesus told the disciples to do also. So in the Gospel of Mark, Actually, the biblical critics say that Mark, the Gospel of Mark ends with chapter 16, verse 6, 8. And what comes after that, 9 to 20, is presented as an appendix or something, addition. But there is no manuscript that is with, found without this addition. So even though it could be presented as a later addition, this is part of the Bible, part of the revealed canonical Bible, Word of God. And now you come to the last verses. Mark chapter 16, 14 and following. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table. And, they up, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, and this is the final mission, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So these are the signs Jesus promised that the disciples will be able to perform. And that is continuing from the first century to the 21st century. Many of these miracles are happening. Now, so these miracles are not an end in themselves. The miracles are signs. Signs pointing to something beyond. So the, what is that beyond? That is the kingdom of God. And now, Jesus performed miracles and gave the power to the disciples to do the same as part of the proclamation of God. During his lifetime, Jesus performed and the disciples also were allowed to perform the miracles. But then, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, Jesus promised that he would send the Spirit. And the Spirit will enable them to proclaim the gospel in a convincing way. That is presented in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, 
verses 1, 6 to 8. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That is the promise we had given. So the disciples have to bear witness to Jesus, proclaim the kingdom, proclaim the good news. And the Holy Spirit will enable them to proclaim in a convincing way. The word spoken is confirmed through the actions. The actions somehow explained, see the reality, the truth of the, the proclamation. And the proclamation explains the content and meaning of the miracle. So the miracle and proclamation go hand in hand. Both are important, but the word is more important than the miracles themselves. So much so that even though Jesus had performed so many miracles, at the end, very few believed him. In the beginning, everybody was there, but then gradually we see, they see the miracles one after the other, and finally they don't really believe. They are thirsty, they are hungry for miracles. And the miracles, what they mean, is not understood by the people who experience the miracle as well. So there is a great danger when we go after the miracles, we forget the good news that is being manifested through the miracles. The miracles are performed as part, as by the power of the Holy Spirit and should be understood as God, signs of God's kingdom or signs proclaiming that God's rule is becoming a reality here and now. So this, we will be analyzing each miracle, individual miracle in the following sessions. But one thing we have to keep in mind, why did God allow such miracles to happen? What is the purpose of the miracles? Why is God giving even now? You see now, there is also a trend all over the world and especially in Kerala. There was a time in the 80s and 90s, a lot of miracles were happening, especially in Kerala. In the conventions, the public conventions, the hundreds of thousands taking part, so many healings, miraculous healing, retreat centers, etc. Now, gradually, these miracles have dwindled and you see here and less and less about miracles from one place to the other. So kind of changing, shifting centers and the frequency of miracle is much less today. And we don't know how long it is going to happen. And there is a great danger we see. When you look only for the miracle, only for the favors to receive, and never listen to what God was asking you, unless you change your heart and ways, the miracles are useless. So you may be receiving your sight, you may be receiving a healing, but the next day you can become ill again. So what does the miracle mean? What is God telling us through these miraculous interventions? That's what we have to see. When we analyze each individual miracle, we'll try to see what the gospel writer, what the evangelist is telling, what God is revealing to us through these miracles. One thing, be sure, the miracles are signs. And signs are not themselves important. Signs are pointing to something. And there may be more or less miracles, but what is important is the message conveyed through the word of God. That is the gospel of the kingdom of God. So when we analyze the miracles and see the action of Jesus, the reaction of the people and the outcome, we have to keep this in mind. The miracles are signs of the kingdom and we have to understand what the kingdom of God is. For this, let us ask the grace, the help of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, send us your spirit. Enlighten our minds. Strengthen our hearts to understand to believe what you are revealing through the miracles and what you are asking us to do. Enable us to trust in you and to obey you. Your word will be our guide. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.